Austin Matthews stays hot with another hat trick performance over the weekend. And Connor Bedard comes to town. We'll chat about all that and more on today's edition of the Lockdown Lease Podcast, part of Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Leafs podcast, a daily Maple Leafs centric podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my co-host Dave Morissuti. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code Locked On NHL to get up to a one hundred dollar match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. What's going on, Dave? Big time Monday here in Toronto. Yeah, it's it's. Uh... I was looking at the calendar, like going into this week, just to prepare myself. And it's like, what a crazy like setup, not just for the Leafs, but for Connor Bedard. Like, kid gets oh, thrown yeah. right into the the fire. In I, I was game. thinking about, yeah, I was thinking about that too. He's yet to play a home game. The guys had to be on the road to start his career. You would think that that would have been more of a. You know, like, let's get this rookie phenom who's going to be the face of the franchise to start a game at some point in Chicago here. But there'll be four games through on this road trip and uh, have yet to play in front of their their home fans. But, yeah, like tonight they're rolling like they started things off in pit against Sid. Then they went to Boston and then they went into Montreal on Saturday night. And now they come into uh, into Toronto. They've lost two of those three games so far. Bedard, just one goal so far. But he's looked lethal, man. He's looked good. So uh, we'll, we'll preview this game in, in just a little bit. But we got to talk about our own sniper before we get to Connor Bedard and what's going on in Chicago, buddy. Because Con- uh, Austin Matthews is... This guy's on to... like He's on another level right now. Back-to-back hat tricks to start the season. Uh, the first time that's been done in forever, and the first time that it's been done in any Leafs game since 1994. Um, dude, like this, this is good news for the Maple Leafs to see this guy scoring at this rate. I mean, it's good for real sports for anybody that's had to donate a hat and had to go buy a new one. Yes, that too. Um, so, note to Leafs fans: if you're going on a Leaf game, bring an extra hat. Because Austin Matthews is wanting to make a donation, but like I, I was looking back, I mean the the stats around this are crazy. Because like Alex Ovechkin, when he did it in 2017, was the first player since 1917 to open the season with two hat tricks. Yeah. So Austin Matthews joins a pretty elite company in that regard, but it's also the ease in which he's doing it, right? Like he's not no, there's no empty netters. Um. He's doing it in many different ways. He's not just relying on, you know, tap-ins or anything like that. Like, he's legitimately putting himself in that position to go out and say, yeah, I'm scoring three goals tonight. Yeah, in a lot of ways, he's saying, I also probably plan on trying to score more than three goals because I'm capable of it. And Which is the crazy part is, yeah, he scored three, but could have had four or five in, in either of those games in Montreal and again the other night when they beat uh, the wild seven to four. Um, what are, uh, what, what are a couple more takeaways that you've had, I guess, with, uh, with the win the other night over the Minnesota wild? I mean, as good as Austin Matthews performance was William Nylander had the goal of the night. Like oh. they call him Willie styles for a reason. Like that goal was just gorgeous. Uh, very similar to the move he pulled against the Minnesota wild last year. Against yep. the overtime, just different goalie. He had to victimize someone different this time. Um, yeah, and uh, you know, I, I, we went into this game thinking the Wild were going to be a stingy defensive team, and the Maple is like, well, about that, we're going to put up seven on these guys. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm probably going to go 
away from like the Leafs want to to lock it down. Although if you listen to Sheldon Keith, and again, you know, show me, don't tell me, because Keith once again noted in practice yesterday how they haven't really liked how leaky they've been defensively and would like to clean that up uh, going into tonight's game against Chicago. But uh, I mean, it's leading to a lot of goals. That's that's for sure, right? Like they've got twelve of them through the first two games of the season. You had Bertuzzi get his first goal of the season uh, in, in the game against Minnesota. So you're getting a lot of offense from uh, from a lot of different parts, and that's always fun to see, obviously, uh, for the Maple Leafs. One thing that has definitely crept up and become a topic of conversation is Ilya Samsonov. Uh, another uninspiring performance. Uh, you know, again, the, the, they haven't helped him a whole lot with some leaky defensive coverage, but two games now, Samsonov has looked subpar. Uh, at what point, I guess, do you do you start to raise an eyebrow and say, what's going on here? Well, once the Leafs play a little better defensively in front of him and he's still letting in the goals, that's where I'm going to be more critical of him. Like, I'm critical of him now because, yeah, you're allowing four-plus a game. Not ideal. You want to be... Especially considering how good of a how, how good he was at home last year, so there's that. But yeah, I think you know when the Leafs start playing that better defensive game in front of him, that and he's allowing the stinker goals, that's where I will really start to you know throw a little bit of criticism his way. And you know, like I, I, I like the first goal of the game. I'm sure people were like, "Ah, oh, here we go again." But like, that's a double deflection. <laughs> like, yeah. That, like that, a lot of goalies are not stopping like something like that. So, you know, there there were moments where, yeah, he needs to be better. But at the same time, when the team is playing a little more open, as you say, like loose and trying to get those offensive chances, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get a lot of back and forth. You're going to get a lot of those breakdowns because you're so hyped up on playing such an offensive game that defensively, it's not always going to be there. Yeah, and if you take a look at the numbers from the game the other night, uh, over the course of the 60 minutes, the Minnesota Wild had 31 scoring chances, 12 of which uh, of the high danger variety, and uh, I think they ended up converting three of their goals were were high danger. So, I mean, that that was just a big issue is is you're just giving up too many quality looks uh, to to teams. You saw that happen against the. Montreal Canadiens, and then it happened again against the Minnesota Wild. I'll be curious to see tonight if they finally do button things up. Uh, I, I won't be betting on it happening anymore. Fumi won. Shame on me. Or, yeah, shame on you, Fumi twice. Shame on me. Uh, but should be interesting to see if they can try and tighten things up because that's going to have to happen. You, you can't leave your goaltender out to dry because – Although it seems uh, likely that Matthews can, you know, stick to this 246 goal pace, uh, it's unlikely he nets three three a night, giving you that type of cushion. So um, you might want to, you know, bottle it up a little bit and and just play some better better defense. I mean, the team gave up uh, was the expected goals against 3.1. On oh, I had it here, 3.31 goals uh, expected goals against and. I mean, it makes sense. They ended up giving up four. So um, pretty much that's that's what they were expected to give up, and that's what they did. Uh, another thing that uh, that was kind of a topic of conversation, I suppose, which we can get into uh, in just a moment, was the goal song and how it is no longer uh, the goal song that they originally selected. Why don't we take a quick break, Dave? We'll come back. We'll chat about it. We'll go through uh, our, our three stars from the game. And then tee up tonight. Bedard's in town. Uh, that all will most definitely be must-watch TV. So we'll get into uh, to that and preview that game also in just a moment. But before we get into all that, let's tell you a little bit about one of today's show sponsors. And it's a good friends over at Sleeper. If Austin Matthews scores a hat trick, much like he did in nights one and two, or the Maple Leafs finally end their skid and win a Stanley Cup. And if you want to win 100 times your money, play daily fantasy hockey on the Sleeper app. These are all possible scenarios for this season, but 
to have a chance at winning big, you need to play daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper. As the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network, Sleeper is our top choice for daily fantasy sports, especially daily fantasy hockey. With Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. With studs like Austin Matthews, Connor McDavid, Sidney Crosby, Kale McCarr, all you need to do is pick more or less of on all of these stats for these stars. You can choose stats like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more. You heard me, Lee fans, a hundred time payouts on Sleeper. So start paying attention and get your picks right so you can win big. Use the promo code Locked On NHL and you'll get up to one hundred dollar match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's Locked On NHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for uh, for details. Welcome back into the Locked On at Least podcast. I'm Mike DiStefano with Dave. More Sudi. We're a daily Maple Leaf centric podcast. So uh, if you haven't already, uh, you could subscribe to us <clears throat> wherever you get your podcast from. Uh, we're also up on YouTube. We got new content coming out each and every weekday, Monday through Friday. Uh, Dave, I was not anticipating as much uh, blowback on the goal song when, uh, when, they finally debuted it. It was not Hollow Notes for the first time in five years. And everyone was happy that they heard, oh my God, they're changing the song. And then when they changed it to Pursuit of Happiness, there was a lot more people who were uh, who were angry with that. And it became a controversial song. And according to our buddy, Nick Alberga, we shouldn't expect to hear Pursuit of Happiness much more, if at all, for the rest of the season. Uh, what do you know about this situation? Well, it's interesting because the day after the game, uh, my mother first was asking my sister and I how we liked the game because we went to the game. What did we think of the new goal song? I said, oh, it was, it's got, you know, it's got a nice beat to it, things like that. And she's like, what song was it? Like, I've never heard this song before. And I'll admit, like, I've heard parts of the song, but I hadn't hear, like really paid attention to the lyrics of the mm-hmm. song. So I played the song. My mother looks at me and she's like, they chose this song. (laughs) The lyrics of the song are not great. They're not exactly what I call kid friendly. No, I'll say this, though. 95% of songs, if you actually listen and pay attention to the lyrics, you could probably make the case that it also is not kid friendly. Yeah, so... Like, I can understand the complaints for that stuff. Um, I also say, well, I mean, some things that kids are listening to nowadays, I think parents are maybe overblowing it just a little bit because that's what I'm saying, (laughs) Brooksy. Right. So I can get that. I mean, I had so many people tell me, oh, they got to go back to Hall of Notes. And I said, stop. (laughs) Like, let's, no, that song is retired. There's nothing like it's not associated with anything special with the leaves. Like, let's not make this some sort of like sacred song that could never be replaced. Right. Yeah. Like the Chelsea dagger in Chicago or what the Rangers got. It ain't that either. No, no. no. Yeah. I mean, we already knew they were going to be doing a rotation of songs. Did I expect a game two of the season? No. So no. And apparently game three, you can be a new one. Uh, apparently there'll be another one tonight too, like yeah. a new song. So I don't know how many songs are in the rotation. Um, I don't know if now that the original selection of the goal song is, is considered a, a no, no. Are they just going to open it up and have a bunch of different goals songs throughout the year? I don't know. This is going to be interesting uh, storyline to track at least throughout the duration of the season. And I'm telling you, man, only in Toronto does, the goal song become like a daily discussion. Uh, it's it's hilarious what you know what this city uh, cares about. Apparently, goal songs is is high on that priority list. But I guess when you're you know winning games and you got your superstar scoring goals, there's not a lot to complain about. So the goal song uh, is is what a lot of Leaf fans uh, decide to uh, to do. Now it's it's a song that's been heard a lot over the course of uh, of these two games, obviously. You heard it five times in the game against Montreal on opening night, and then seven times uh, you heard the goal song in a game against the Minnesota Wild. Uh, in that wild game, though, Dave, let's get to our three stars on the weekend. Who you got? 
I'm going to go with Morgan Riley as my third star. I thought this, like we were, someone was telling me we got to see Morgan Riley from the playoffs. Where's that Morgan Riley after the first game? I think we saw a little bit more of that in game game two. I thought he was all over the, uh, the ice and in, in a good way. You, you were, this is the type of Morgan Riley the Leafs are going to need if they want to be a successful team this year. Yeah, I completely, completely agree with you. He's on the ice for uh, for four goals last night uh, or the other night and had a 74% expected goals. Um, the, the guy was unbelievable last night. And uh, I completely am with you in giving Morgan Riley uh, the third star of the hockey game. Ends up with a couple of a uh, couple of points as well. So anytime Morgan Riley can turn the clock back and look like gold playoff self, I, I think that we gotta we gotta acknowledge it and give him some love for that. And it's exactly what we saw happen on Saturday night. Uh, so yeah, Mo getting the third star from both of us, and uh, I think he ended up with what twenty over twenty one minutes of ice time as well. Um, so yeah, I I wonder too, like without having to play on the power play, does that give him enough uh, energy? I guess to mm-hmm. be, you know, a better player at five on five. I I, I know it's so early, so I, we don't know the answer to that question. But you know, I w- I wonder if that's the case here. Yeah, I I, I do wonder like that times do you know Morgan Riley had played a lot of minutes, right and. I know a lot of people have criticized Riley as like a true number one defenseman. I think my criticism was that you can't be playing this guy like, you know, 25, 26 minutes a night. You got to rein those minutes back a little yeah. bit. And I think that the, I think this is the perfect opportunity for them to do that. I, I, I think he's gotten better in certain aspects of his game, especially from last year. You saw you saw that sort of change from him later in the year. So I'm. I think you know what if this is the direction that they're going with them, I don't hate it. Like this is something they need desperately from Morgan Riley. Absolutely. Second star of the game, Dave. You know what? I was gonna give it to William Nylander when I was planning this, but I think I'm gonna switch gears and give it to Bertuzzi. You gotta Ooh. shout out the guy for getting his first goal and just being yeah. a pain in the rear to play yeah. against. Like he is coming as advertised for this Leafs team. Yeah, all these guys have kind of uh, have come as advertised. I want to get into a discussion about Ryan Reeves. We'll probably do it on tomorrow's show. Um, but there seems to be a, a split fan base, which I totally knew was coming. Uh, we'll get into that conversation, though, tomorrow. But yeah, no, that's that's definitely a worthwhile shout out for, for Tyler Bertuzzi. I'm going to give it to William Nylander, though, because, man, that goal was so pretty. Uh, scored two goals last night, had an assist, so three point outing, six shots on goal, also laid a hit in uh, just over 17 minutes of ice time. I think William Nylander's been uh, been solid, man. Like he's having a, a good start to the year, and just uh, man, he's he's earning money. He's earning money as we go on for the season, and uh, it's not a bad thing for Toronto, obviously, to get the production like that out of this guy. But man, it does make you think. Like, ah, should should they have just signed him? Should they really just signed him in the off season? I don't know. But uh, he was he was great again against the Wild. I think Jeffler was the one that tweeted out that Will and Nylander should not depart Scotia Bank Arena without a new contract, or somebody tweeted that out. I, I yeah, and I'm like, yeah, I mean, it's kind of true. Like, like he's he's playing a more pronounced game. Um, we were concerned about him being he's- on the wing. Like, he's just on on he you know what the thing is like like the goal that he scored the other night where he's just playing assertive man yeah and when you're as good and talented as William Nylander and you can play with that much assertion and just take the game over and just power it to the net cut across and score like that's a, that's just special things man and, and and if that's the type of Nylander that the Leafs are going to get on more nights than not this year. I mean that's that's quite the complimentary piece to to Austin Matthews, and this team's going to win a lot of games that way. Yeah, and this is the, we saw it in the playoffs, right? That's what made him such a such a you know valuable contributor in the playoffs is that he was asserting himself in those situations where you know there was criticism for Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner for not doing it as much. Nylander was kind of the leader in that regard, so we know it's there from for Nylander. 
We just want to see that on a more consistent level, right? Can he do that night in and night out? Because that's what's going to separate Nylander from being that, you know, $8 million player that everyone thinks he is to that 10 plus million dollar player that he believes he, he is. Yeah. And yeah, he still uh, got to dial it in a bit more defensively. And I was looking at the numbers last night. Um, they've been outscored four to two, the Nylander and Tavares line at five on five. And, and with that, a little adjustment has been made to the lineup uh, where he, they've got a new line mate now. We'll, we'll tell you about that in just a couple of moments when we start to preview tonight's game. But the first star from Saturday night's 7-4 win against the Minnesota Wilds, I would imagine it is a man who hails from Arizona. Yes. Uh, right. Matthew said. Nyes. Just kidding. The other guy, Austin Matthews. I mean, you mean the guy with the mustache. The man with the muzzy. Yeah, big poppy himself. It's, it's you know, I was, uh, I had to watch this game because I was at the Argo game. So I, at first, was watching a bit of the game. I also PVR'd it too because I always watched it back. And somebody, <laughs> somebody messaged me saying he's doing it again. And I'm like, he's doing it again. Like, that's all like, the text I got from my friend. He's doing it again. And I'm like, well, who is he? And he's like, Austin Matthews. I'm like, oh, yeah, part for the course for like how many like we're, you shouldn't even be surprised at this point, right? Like, yeah. And I wonder if like Austin Matthews, I don't know if he's one of those guys that reads into like all those rankings of like players who are like tops in the league. And you no, know, nobody, not a lot of people were putting Austin Matthews in the top three. Dude, I, I was looking the uh, like NHL.com had him outside the top five. Like then, like I think at number six in terms of best player in the league. I'm like, I mean, that's bullet to board material for a guy like Austin Matthews because a year prior he established himself as the NHL's top player when he took home the Hart, the Lindsay, and took home the Rocket. I think he wants to get back to that this year. And, and and that's what's I mean when you sign that contract when you have those expectations of being the highest paid player in the league, he's not the highest paid player in the league this year, but going forward, yeah, these are the performances right that that cement that reasoning why he got that contract. Hundred percent, hundred percent. He was the guy was a beast, absolute beast. All right, uh, speaking of absolute beast, there's a, a guy coming to town. It's going to be the Bedard Show in To tonight. We'll preview that game when we get back. Uh, but first, let me tell you guys about one of today's show sponsors. It's our good friends over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible, eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back into the Lockdown Lease Podcast. It's Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti. It's, uh, it's a victory Monday after the Maple Leafs win their second game of the season. They ride a two-game win streak, I suppose, a perfect 2-0 record into tonight's matchup against Connor Bedard and the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, you didn't luck into any tickets for tonight's game, Dave? No. No, not at all. Uh, the the streak is over. No, uh, it's it's the most expensive ticket in town. That's for sure. One of the most I, expensive tickets in town. I would imagine so. I'm curious what it's going for over on on uh, on game time. I might go and check that out uh, in in a couple of seconds here. But man, this this is gonna be this is obviously must watch, right? It's it's Connor Pedard's first time in Toronto, the hockey mecca of uh, uh, of of the hockey universe. Um, what type of game are you expecting tonight? 
Well, I mean, you're going to like if you're if you want a dr- good drinking game for tonight, just any mention of Connor Bedard's name on the broadcast and you're going to be hammered within the first like two minutes because it's going to be nonstop. Like the the fanfare behind the behind Connor Bedard, obviously, you know, first overall pick and, you know, a generational talent. I can understand why. I'm expecting, you know, what Chicago has been a, a team that I was expecting to be a little better when you add a Connor Bedard. I wasn't expecting to be as competitive, right? Like they beat Pittsburgh on night one. They went toe to toe with Boston in the yeah. back to back. Montreal, that was a close game there. Like th- this is a team that, you know what? It's a perfect game for the Leafs to show that they're not the same old Leafs. Like, are they going to play down to their opponent or are they going to rise up to the challenge? And that to me is, I think, the thing I'm going to look for the most, right? Other than, you know, the Connor Bedard, um, you know, him being, uh, you know, all this fanfare behind him, I want to see can the Leafs step up in a game like this because they've had issues with Chicago in the past. Yeah. I want to see if that's going to remain the same. Yep. Now Chicago in the past, like back in the Patrick Kane, Taze era, like that, that was a good team, right? That was a perennial playoff team. They'd won Stanley Cups and, and, you know, it, whenever these two teams played, it was always uh, a showdown. Like, uh, the over has hit in like seven of the last eight games. There's been a lot of goals. Remember the, the five, four game or the, 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 the seven, six game when Austin Matthews doing the old Hulk Hogan. Can you hear me? Like there's always been antics between these two teams, but no longer is, is this like the Patrick Kane and, and Jonathan Tays Blackhawks. It's now, you know, Connor Bedard and well, really who else? Not, not much else. So, yeah, like outs, if they can contain Bedard, I, I think the Leafs have a good chance to to win this game. Um, they've decided to make a change in goal. Now, I think it's, you know, not strictly because Samsonov hasn't looked good. I think this is probably the plan. Get the first couple of games for Samsonov, and then you got Chicago coming to town. Probably go to Joe Wall, get him his first little bit of action. I think this was planned all along, but I, I mean... This may be a chance for Joe Wall to maybe try and get a couple more starts over the next month if he plays well tonight, considering Samsonov hasn't looked sharp. But in order to do that, Dave, I think the Leafs just got to tighten it up defensively. Like that, that to me is what I'm kind of watching for tonight's game. We know the offense is there. 12 goals through two games. They've been able to score at will. But can they tighten things up defensively and really round out that two-way, 200-foot game? That's what's got to be important. And I think doing that against a less threatening lineup in the Chicago Blackhawks uh, might be a, a you know a good way to try and get that uh, get that down pat here early in the season. Yeah, I think that's yeah, I, I think you're right there. And I, I'm not surprised that Wolves getting the start. You know, we we kind of talked about this one when we get Wool and I said, like, this is probably the a yeah. good opportunity gives Samsonov some days to work with Curtis Stanford a little bit here, maybe get some extra work in and try to get, and like Sheldon Keefe even said after, I think it was, I don't know if it was yesterday or after Saturday's game, like Samsonov hasn't found his groove yet, but at the same time, he did mention the team's got to play better defensively in front of him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. He does. I was at a card show yesterday, Dave. I was this close to buying a clear cut Joe wall, young guns, I didn't pull the trigger. If he turns out to be like a one A one B goalie this year, that card's going to spike in value, and I'm I might be kicking myself for it. But now, uh, how about it, the Austin Matthews hoopla? Like, how much did prices soar because of a two hat trick? Oh, insane! Like prices are up. I was looking into the market yesterday because I'm doing a story on it. The last uh, the last two weeks. Um, they've seen Austin Matthews card prices rise like 15% in value and most of what's coming in the last like week, few days here uh, once the season started. And yeah, it was a card that, you know, a PSA 10 you could pick up in the summer for, oh geez, I think I was picking them up around like nine fifty ish. And now they're up at like 12, $1,300 selling. So that's, that's the power of, goal scoring and what it can do for the hockey card market. Uh, hopefully he can continue to, to have a tour of pace and score again tonight. I, I like for him to score a goal tonight at least, and, you know, be a, a beast out there. That's the thing. Like the, this, 
this Toronto team has fared extremely well against Chicago. Uh, like maybe it's been more 50 50 on uh, in terms of the win loss column, but in terms of putting up points and production, like, all three of, of you know the Toronto studs have been able to to put up numbers. Like Mitch Marner, he's a point per game pace. You get, William Nylander has nine goals in eleven contests against the Blackhawks. I mean, that might be worthy of an anytime goal play tonight. And then obviously, with what Austin Matthews is doing, there's no reason to think that Peter Morazic can uh, can can stop him from what he's been up to. So I think that we're going to see a you know a high high scoring game from the Maple Leafs perspective. I'm hoping that they put on a bit more of a defensive clinic. I see a, a wide gap between the scores here tonight. Uh, but in order to do all that, Dave, what's uh, what are what are three keys to victory for the Maple Leafs? I say watch out for the Blackhawk support lines, right? Like there's going to be a lot of attention played on Carter Bedard, but. You know, they're getting contributions all around the lineup here. Like, um, like Connor Bedard didn't even hasn't scored in every game. Like, I think that's something that needs to be reminded of people. He's not the only one on the ice scoring goals for this Blackhawks team. Yeah, he's not Austin Matthews. He hasn't scored in every game, guys. Come on now. Tyler Johnson had two goals against the Habs, by the way. Like he did, and Bedard set one up. I'll say this though, Bedard may not have a goal in every game, but he shoots like a madman and he does lead the league in in individual expected goals yeah so um i if you're, drop. If you're someone like me who has made a little bit of money on Connor bedard shot props oh yeah hammer the shot props on yes. Connor Bedard as yes. much as possible this kid loves to shoot the puck but uh, you know sheldon keith did say his playmaking his ability is much better than he even thought it was so it's a part of his game that i think you know teams are starting to realize that that's and even a part of the game i didn't even realize really that he wasn't gonna have and i think it's a smart move on him to really adopt that and make sure that you know he's not a one-dimensional offensive player like that he can dish the puck a bit more it's funny somebody's yeah. like austin matthew's such a selfish player six goals zero assists hey i'll take it buddy i'll take hey, it mr cy young take your points. Take it. it doesn't matter how which way they come in that's right. That's right, baby. It came with two wins and, and four points, so we'll take those numbers all day long. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, paying attention to to uh, Connor Bedard is clearly going to be is going to be key. I mean, I, I know I've I've already used it. Like tidying up defensively is is another one of my keys tonight. Just make sure that you know the Maple Leafs. If you're out there and and, and you've got guys in front of the net, box out. Let Joseph Wall see what's coming at him. Don't allow tips in front don't allow deflections in front uh i think it's going to be very key tonight not just like uh, you know if they give up two three goals i think the leafs are going to score enough where it it shouldn't cost them um but let's have a good a good clean low scoring game and be happy with the defensive effort right only give up maybe one goal tonight maybe joe wall gets himself a shutout i don't know but i think that a good defensive effort would uh, would go a long way with the confidence in this group defensively oh i think so i think they do need like if they could keep the blackhawks to two goals which is a po is possible you know it is definitely possible i think that goes a long way in trying to establish that uh you know that defensive play that defensive structure that the least one is still here yep uh one more key to tonight's game dave uh Watch out for the Corey Perry, Nick Foligno shenanigans. Like these guys do want, like they they were brought here for a reason to Chicago. They wanna, right? Other than paying them a lot of money, <laughs> they they've been a pain in the rear to play against. Like they're knowing the first game against the Penguins, it was them that led the charge in that game to win. Yeah, yeah. Like they're they're not terrible hockey players, not great hockey players, but they're they they serve they serve a role. Luckily, Ryan Reeves is here to make sure none of that extra shenanigans stuff happens with this against this Leafs team three in a row <sighs> uh if he lands a hit on someone I don't think he's gonna hit Bedard I don't know if that's where he I don't know if he's ever gonna be on the ice with Bedard in this game but if he lands a hit on someone as we saw in the game against Minnesota I think you there's a chance but I'm less less inclined to think a fight happens tonight 
there's an interesting Ryan Reeves debate that's going on right now between Leaf fans. We're not going to touch on it today, but I think that might be a topic for tomorrow's show. Um, it's it's just you know the classic intangibles versus production, uh, the the numbers v- versus you know the eye test, and uh, I don't know. We'll uh, we'll get into that conversation I think tomorrow because it definitely is a worthwhile and interesting one, and one that we pretty much anticipated when we spoke on the Ryan Reeves signing. Um, it is coming. Pretty much as advertised, uh, both positively and negatively for Ryan Reeves. Um, but we'll discuss if that's a good thing or a bad thing for the Maple Leafs. I think we'll get into that a little bit tomorrow. Um, all right, buddy, let's wrap things up. I'm excited, though. You know, it's going to be the Bedard show and T.O. And uh, any time you get to see Austin Matthews play in an original six team, it's always a good one. And I mean, maybe maybe asking for a, a third straight game with three goals might be a bit much, but if he can continue to, to add to that goal total with one or two, uh, that'd be sweet as well. We'll see what happens. All right. That'll do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Lockdown Leafs podcast on all podcasts and platforms. You receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on Twitter at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore. More Sudi follow the show as well at Locked on Leafs. We'll be back with another episode for y'all tomorrow to recap the game. But until then, keep it locked right here on Locked on Leafs.